people who are cynical about religious structures like to think of faith as the willingness to demolish your intellect in the service of superstition. And, you know, there's, there's something to be said for that perspective, but not a lot, because the reality is much more sophisticated. Part of the faith that's, that, that is being insisted upon in the Old Testament is something like, and I, I'm speaking psychologically here again, that it's useful to posit a high, a high good, and to aim at it. So, and I, I really think that's practically useful too. The research we've done with the Future Authoring Program, for example, indicates pretty clearly that if you get people to conceptualize an ideal, and a, a balanced ideal, you know, so what do you want for your family, what do you want for your career, what do you want for your education, what do you want for your character development, how are you going to use your time outside of work, um, how are you going to structure your use of drugs and alcohol in places where you might get impulsive, how can you avoid falling into a horrible pit? If you really think that through and you come up with an integrated ideal and you, you put it above you as something to reach for, then you're more committed to the world in a positive way and you're less tormented by anxiety and uncertainty. And so, and that makes sense, right? Because here you are alive and everything. And so, unless you were capable if you're not capable of manifesting some positive relationship with the fact of your being, then how could that be anything other than hellish? Because you, it would just be anxiety provoking and terrible because you're vulnerable and there'd be nothing useful or worthwhile to do. Well, that's just not, I just can't see that as a winning strategy for anyone. You can make a rational case for adopting that strategy in that, you know, you can say, well, there's no evidence for for a transcendent morality or for an ultimate meaning, there's no hard empirical evidence. But it seems to me that there's existential evidence as well that has to be taken into account. And, and of course, psych psychologists have talked about this a lot. Um, Carl Rogers, for example, and Jung, for that matter, Freud, for that matter, most of the great psychologists have pointed out that, you know, you can derive reasonable information that's, that's solid from your own experience, especially if you also talk to other people, and you can kind of see in your own life when you're on a productive path that sort of ennobles and enlightens you, or a destructive path. And I think it's kind of useful to think that maybe the dichotomy between those two paths might be real, you know, and, and because that also allows you to give credence to your intuitions about that sort of thing. But I don't, anyways, I don't think it's unreasonable to posit that since you're alive, adopting the highest possible regard for the fact that you're alive, and that you're surrounded by other creatures that are alive, I just can't see how that can possibly be construed as a losing strategy. And so that's the first thing. So that's something like faith, right? It's faith, it's not, it's not only faith in your being, but it's faith in being as such. And the faith would be something like, if you could orient your being properly, then maybe that would orient you with being as such. And you never know. Like, I mean, it might be true. There's no reason to assume that it wouldn't be true. I mean, even if you just take a strict biological perspective on this and think about us as the product of three and a half billion years of evolution, I mean, we have struggled over all those billions of years to be alive and to match ourselves with reality. And so, because one of the things I've often wondered is, you know, Life is definitely difficult, there's no doubt about that, and it's unfair, and there's inequality, and all of those things, and people are subject to all sorts of terrible things, but I also wonder, if you weren't actively striving to make things worse, just how much better could they be? You know, because people are very, they're like houses that are divided amongst themselves. They're pointing in six different directions at the same time. They're working at cross-purposes to themselves because of bitterness or be and, and resentment and un what, unprocessed memories and childhood hatreds and unexamined assumptions, all sorts of things. And you, you just got to wonder if you could push that aside and orient yourself properly. And then the other thing that, of course, is stressed very heavily in the Old Testament, and of course that goes through the entire biblical corpus, is that it's not only enough to establish a positive relationship with being, which I think is the essential, it's a good description of faith. You have to make that decision, right? Because being is very ambivalent. And you can make the case that maybe it's something that should have never happened. 
but that doesn't seem to be productive to me. And faith seems to be, I'm going to act as if being is ultimately justifiable, and that if I partake in it properly, I will improve it rather than making it worse. So I think that's the statement of faith. And then what seems to go along with that is something like truth in conception and action. You know, even people like Jacob, who are pretty damn morally ambivalent to begin with, get hammered a lot by what they go through. And what seems to happen is that they're hammered into some sort of ethical shape, right? So by the midpoint of their life's journey, there's people who are solidly planted, who you can trust and who don't betray being or themselves or their fellow man. And so it's an interesting, I mean, it seems reasonable to me to first assume that you have to establish a relationship with something that's transcendent. It might even be just the future version of you. But, and then second, that you have to align yourself with reality in a truthful manner, and that that's your best bet. And the biblical stories are actually quite realistic about that too, because they don't really say that if you do that, you're going to be instantly transported to the promised land. Like even Moses, as we'll find out in the Exodus stories, he never makes it to the promised land. And so, it's not like you're offered instantaneous final redemption if you move out forthrightly into the world, establish a faithful relationship with being, and attempt to conduct yourself with integrity. But it's your best bet, and it might be good enough. And even if it's not good enough, it's really preferable to the alternative, which seems to be something closely akin to hell, both personal and social.